tutorial we're going to talk about a very new introduction to microsoft azure service which is open ai service so within microsoft azure you can start accessing open ai services starting today and this is an announcement that was made a um, few hours back so it says that there is a general availability of open ai models general availability of open ai services is available to everybody Whoever has access to Microsoft Azure cloud service, they can access OpenAI services. Now, when we say OpenAI services, what do we mean? And um, how do you access it? Like what are the steps for you to access OpenAI service? That is exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. The first thing that you need to keep in mind is OpenAI already has got its own API service, but this is on top of that. It is there because of their partnership with Microsoft Azure that they are offering OpenAI service inside Microsoft Azure. Now, what all the services that are available, the few highlights, you can use GPT 3.5. That's what they're calling the latest version, Text DaVinci 003. So if you're familiar with Text DaVinci 003, based on which chat GPT is built, you can use GPT 3.5, that is Text DaVinci 003. You can use Codex. Codex is primarily to create code programs, so if you remember GitHub Copilot, services like that uses co codecs. And then you can also use DALI2, which is to generate images. So basically the text generation, code generation, and image generation. All three latest update are available within Microsoft Azure as part of OpenAI service. Now, the next thing is, they have also announced that customers will be ab able to access chat GPT, which is a fine tuned version of GPT 3.5 soon. So this is coming soon. So this is very baity click baity that chat GPT API is going to come soon within Microsoft Azure. We don't know the timeline. We don't know when, but it is also announced by Satya Nadella, who is the CEO of Microsoft that chat GPT is coming soon to Azure OpenAI service. Having said that, now we know what is there in Microsoft Azure which in this case is Azure OpenAI service. And we also know what kind of services that are available for us to use. And we also know that ChatGPT is coming soon. Now, how do you access it? What are the steps for you to access? The first step is provided that you have a Microsoft Azure account. The first step is you need to request access to Azure OpenAI service. I'll link this in the YouTube description so you can check it out. So right now, this has to be requested prior. And one of the thing that you can see here is, thank you for your interest in Azure OpenAI service. Please submit this form, an approval for new experimentation scenario using OpenAI Azure, o o Azure OpenAI's text and code models, including developing new proof of concept. Second one is for approval to move from development to production using Azure OpenAI's text and code models. Third one is expressing interest in the invite only preview for DALI. So unlike what that document, like the announcement said, which is generally available, it's not like you can just, like you just saw that and then you wanted to use it, you cannot right away use it. It is not how it works or it is not how it is enabled. You still have to submit this form, which is a request access to Azure OpenAI service form and then gain access. And when you submit this form, you're actually basically doing three things. And then you can see the details here. The amount of details that you have to submit, um, it's, it's a lot, honestly speaking. You have a lot of questions. What are you applying for? Whether are you applying for the experimentation review? Are you applying for the production review? What kind of capabilities you're planning to have in your application? Which domain are you going to use this application for? So you have to answer a lot of things. You have to answer a lot of questions. Uh, like your information, what are you going to do, all the information. Once you request an access, once your access is approved, then it's basically a cakewalk. All you have to do is log into your Microsoft Azure account. And once you log into it, you can go here in the search and then you can search for OpenAI. Once you search for OpenAI, you are going to get Azure OpenAI inside the services. I mean, you can do this in multiple ways, but the simplest way is go search here search for OpenAI inside that you can see Azure OpenAI. Click that, that is going to take you to a place where you can click and create Azure OpenAI. So click create Azure OpenAI 
and that is going to now take you to another place where you can basically start creating open AI services. Now I cannot do it because I have not submitted for approval and I don't have access, but I'm going to show you the process. So you have the subscription, then you can create a resource group. One of the things that you need to uh, know is open AI, Azure open AI service is currently available to customers via an application process. And you can click this and still access the document. So the same document that I showed you before this, you can click here and then access it. Then you need to select the region, your um, Azure instance, the name, the pricing tier. And that's where things get interesting because now you get to see the actual pricing of OpenAI, Azure OpenAI service. So one, you have already OpenAI API separately, but now you have got Azure OpenAI service. And here you can see the pricing. You can see basically pricing for everything. You can see pricing for um, the normal text generation for all the models like Ada, Babbage, Curie, DaVinci. I don't know if anybody uses any of these things, but yeah, like DaVinci is the one that people mostly use. Then you can see the pricing for fine tuning. And if you want more details, you can also contact uh, a sales specialist. And you can see uh, for Codex, how much it is. If you have to do something for embedding, how much it is, you can see all the details in here. And after you see all the details, it's, uh, it's basically like any other Microsoft Azure service that you would have created. You have to just go click, click, click next. And then your service would be available. Like if you want to enable a particular port, enable SSH, like all these kind of things. And then finally you would have the service enabled. So the creating service within Azure, open AI service within Azure is not going to be very difficult, whether it is for GPT 3.5 or whether it is for Codex, whether it is for DALI, which is quite preview, you can do it. But I think the first step is, I don't know the frequency at which your application gets approved. I don't know the success rate of application approval. I have no information about any of those things, but it looks like they're taking a very um, stage approach where they're, uh, they're quite precautionary in, in letting people use it. Now, if you ask me like, why would somebody use Microsoft Azure open AI service over uh, the widely known, quite well established open AI's own API service? I think the answer is quite, quite simple. If you are part of any big tech, big organization, healthcare company, finance company, you would know that data security, data privacy is a huge, huge deal for these companies. And that is exactly why Microsoft is advertising it like this, backed by the trusted enterprise grade capabilities. Like that's the most important thing. Like then it says AI optimized infrastructure, but the most important thing is trusted. So Microsoft Azure is being trusted and being used by a lot of organizations already. So which means um, for you to convince somebody who already has got Azure to use Microsoft Azure OpenAI service, even if it is like slightly more expensive than OpenAI for certain cases, people would still prefer this because the data privacy, because it's it stays within your existing cloud for which your organization has already got all the approvals that are required. So for enterprise companies, uh, sorry, for enterprise customers, like big tech, uh, big fin financial companies and uh, companies that where they are already using Azure and they don't want the data to leave their cloud or their instance and go to a different service. I think this is an absolute win. I don't, I don't see why would somebody go use open AI while uh, they've already got Azure. If they value data privacy, data security more, but if you are a small startup, if you are an indie hacker, um, or if you are like me hobbyist, I think it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where do you build it. I think it matters where you get a better deal, which is something that we can explore. Like if you're interested, let me know. I can do a price comparison or service comparison between multiple services. I'm happy to do that and then share it as a new video between Microsoft Azure OpenAI service and OpenAI's own API. But uh, having said that, this is quite an exciting time. I would love to see what GCP, Google Cloud Platform and AWS, Amazon Web Services are going to do because OpenAI has taken the entire world by storm um, very recently, especially with the hype and success of ChatGPT. So everybody knows about it. So now they they just like at the right moment launched it with Microsoft Azure. So it looks like a winning move. I'm not sure what GCP and AWS are going to do, um, but let's uh, let's wait and watch. 
Until that, all the required links will be in the YouTube description. I hope this video was helpful to you in getting started with Microsoft Azure OpenAI service. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Happy watching.